Let's go. Give me them toes. Nice and easy. Japanese. Oh my gosh, Holmes. Oh my gosh, but but this is the last video of BC Cack. Let's go. All right. It's been fun, ladies and gents. Let's get this last bad boy done. I'm going to try to keep it to under 30 with it being the last one. Here we go. Lagrange. Lagrange. Airbound. Okay. So the question is, right, we just got done doing the alternating series remainder and that air bound, but that works for that alternating series. Or what if for some reason we can't come up with like uh, an approximated value, right? Everything about error, error is all about the actual minus our approximated, right? Which thus gives us the remainder or the error. Okay, but what if it's not an alternating series? What if we can't give an approximated value? All that stuff. Well, we have this Lagrange error bound, and this dude helped us to figure out when we're dealing with more complicated functions, an idea of still being able to find an error, right? Which in essence is really just a remainder, right? And what's a remainder? Well, remainder is the error, right? Because it's the absolute value of the actual minus the approximate or vice versa, okay? So that's what we're getting after right now, okay? We could go through all this stuff here, but we are going to get after it. Right, eyeball, I mean, what is this eyeball, blah, blah, blah. We could use Euler's method. We could use Taylor's and all this stuff. But what are we really after? We're really after finding the error. Well, how do we find an error? Well, we all know an error, right? Well, this is our function value, which is in our, our approximated Taylor, which we've been doing Taylor's, right? Plus our remainder, right? So if we do a little minus subtraction and stuff like that, we get our error or our remainder. And what would that be equal to? The actual minus the approximated, right? And if we take the absolute value of that bad boy, we always get the error, right, class? Um, and so how does this tie into more difficult functions? Well, we kind of have a fancy little formula if it's not an alternating series or it's a little bit more complicated. And what that remainder formula is, is this bad boy here. Our remainder is equal to, right, our approximated, minus our actual, right, which means remainder. I've said that like three or four times right now, okay, which is equal to this craziness, right, which if you remember, a Taylor, that looks just like a Taylor polynomial, right? This is exactly what we would do for a Taylor polynomial, correct? And then we would go, and then we would multiply that by the x minus c, right, to the n, all over n factorial. Do you kind of remember that? But if we remember from our error bound, if we just go to the next dude or the first unused term, right, that neglected guy, um, it's going to give me my max error or my max error bound, right? And so that's what we go. We go to the next guy with all of that stuff involved. Now, why do we have to use all that stuff? Because once again, this might not be for an alternating series. Okay, and if it's not, what if it's just e to the x, right? Which is 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial, right? Hopefully we know all that. The BC test is coming up. Uh, and so all that. So we've got this bad boy that works for all those guys. So this is even more important than the alternating series remainder, error bound for the alternating series, because this dude works for everything. Nice, nice. Um, all right, let's roll. Taylor's theorem. If a function f is differentiable, through order n plus 1 in an interval containing the center x equals c, then for each x equals a that is in that interval, there exists a number, z, we're going to call it z, because when do we use z? z was getting jealous. Between a and c such that all of this stuff is true, and our remainder for this bad boy would just be my next dude. And so if I list all these guys out, right, that's just a McLaurin polynomial if it's centered at zero. If it's centered not at zero, that's just a Taylor polynomial. And I've got my remainder here, which is my next guy. All right, so that's how we come up with our Lagrange error bound, okay? Or some people call it the Lagrange remainder. Now, why did this bad boy come up with this stuff? Because historically, the remainder was not due to Taylor. Taylor just gave us a way to get a polynomial, which gave us a great approximation of an actual value, right? And people back in the day, they didn't really care that much. You know, they're just like, hey, it gives me a good approximation. But Lagrange came around with the coolest beard ever. 
second coolest beard ever, all right? And he said, hey, I want to know how accurate we are. What kind of air are we doing with now? And that's how he, he came up with this Lagrange air, Lagrange air bound, okay? And if you notice, it's real case, close to that Taylor polynomial. So that's why Taylor didn't get, uh, didn't get uh, his name on this dude, okay? Lagrange did, but he's really using a Taylor polynomial, right, to do it. So uh, he kind of piggybacked, got on those coattails, right? Uh, if you did something like that today, that'd be a lot of money and be a lot of stank about it. All right, but here, here we go. Let's roll. Calculator permitted. Let F be a function with five derivatives. Five, five, go on the interval from two to three. Assume that, ooh, they tell me that the fifth derivative is less than three. So the biggest it could be is 0.3. For all x, oh, so for every single x in that interval, that's the fifth derivative, it's gotta be less than three. And that a fourth degree Taylor polynomial, T of four, right? That's how we represent that. Um, centered at C equals two, okay, so it's centered at C equals two, is used to estimate F of three. How accurate is this approximation? Whoa, what's going on? We're playing some games in the other class. Ooh, snappity dab. Let's go. Jay Butts was Jay, Johnny Butler was money. Okay. All right, here we go. So let's go back to this. How accurate is this approximation? Give four decimal places. Well, how the heck do I figure this out? Well, duh, if I want to figure that out, I need to find my error, right? How accurate is this? Well, that means I want to find out my error. Oh, and sweeties, of course, last video lesson of the year, the pen runs out, right? So here we go. Let's roll, man. Let's check this out. Got my new little pen pen there. Okay, so this means we want to know the error. Okay, well, what the heck is the error? Well, the error would be, right, it'd be the remainder, and it's telling me to do this guy. So my fourth degree would be my remainder would be R4 of x, right, class? Um, ooh, more specifically, we're doing this for f of 3, right? So my remainder would be r, the fourth degree, at 3. Now, what the heck would that be equal to? I don't, I don't know if this is an alternating series or anything, but I don't need that because Lagrange hooked me up, right? It's a Taylor polynomial. So what does Lagrange tell me to do? Well, for one, the remainder would be equal to f of 3 minus the fourth uh, Taylor polynomial at three, and that would be less than or equal to, right? Okay, now how do I do this guy? I'm gonna go to the next guy, but I'm gonna look at the total Taylor of that next dude, which would be the fifth. So I'm gonna look at the fifth derivative, right? I'm gonna look at the fifth derivative and it's at z, right? Because I'm from two to three. So what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to find the max. The, what's the biggest derivative value at the fifth derivative, the biggest fifth derivative value from two to three? It's a lot of dudes I got to check, right? All over five factorial times x minus c. Well, x is three and it's centered at two. So it'd be x minus c, which would be three minus two raised to the fifth power. I'm going to take the absolute value of that bad boy. Okay, okay, okay. So from two to three, um, I'm going to do the fifth derivative, and I'm going to check two to three. But I don't got to. Why? Because the AP hooked me up. They told me the greatest the derivative is, is going to be 0.3. So all I got to do to finish this bad boy, all, all of this stuff is going to be equal to absolute value of 0.3 over five factorial times one to the fifth. And if I put that stuff in my calculators, and I did already, I got point zero zero two five now everyone do me a favor at home and store that in alpha b okay and then we're going to finish this guy out and i'll get a new little page and i can use my old pen all right so here we go so uh oh you know what well, let's finish this whole example i think i can do it now um so point zero zero two five that's how accurate it is. is that accurate for sure that's accurate okay now they're telling me that uh the taylor polynomial okay, at three, and they didn't give it to me, so that's why they're giving me an answer, is 1.763. Okay, I'm going to store that in A. And it says, use your answer from A to find an interval for where F of three would be. Okay, so I'm going to move this up a little bit, all right? And what's this asking me? Is they're telling me that F of three, the actual value, right, the actual function value will be contained in A minus B 
a plus b, right? Because b, that value that we did earlier, which was stored at 0 0.0025, is the absolute max error that it could possibly be, all right? And remember, that was given to me by that information a little bit earlier when it said the fifth derivative, the highest it could be is 0.3. And I used that, and I went ahead and used Lagrange R around, and I found that that is the error. So now if I plug all that stuff into my calculators, and I did this already for you guys, I get that f of 3 has got to be in between 1.7605. That's a minus b. You can check it, check it, check it. Let me know if it's a wrong. I can remake this video next year, 1.7655. All right, so there it is. Your function value is going to be, and I don't know about you, but that's pretty darn accurate, and we knew it was accurate. Because it was accurate, my error was 0 0.0025, which would be the remainder, right? And so the question is, see, could f of 3 be in there? No way, Jose. That is not in there. So, nah. No way. Okay, well, could f of 3 be 1.761? Could it? Faux? Show. Right? For sure it is, right? Because it's in that interval. All right, easy peasy, jap on easy. Let's keep going. It's the last video of the year. Here we go, example two. Come on, it's the last one. Work for me, pen. Work for me, pen. Example two, let's turn to our original quandary, approximating sine of one. If you remember at the beginning, that's what they were asking me, okay? And they say for this problem, um, use a polynomial to approximate sine one um, by using Taylor's theorem uh, to find the maximum error. Give five decimal points. Okay, it says McLaurin polynomial of fifth degree, okay. So let's go ahead and do this. What is my, uh, holy snap, what's going on here, man? Let's go, let's roll. Why is my stuff not working, right? Boom, all right, sorry. This is what I got, this is what I go through every video for you guys. So, you know, if you wanna bring me in a dark roast coffee to say thanks, Mr. Tanaka, I will not be disappointed at all. Or a Beyond Sausage from DD. Okay, let's go. All right, so fifth degree sine x. Well, we know that sine x, right? That is equal to, what is that? That'd be x minus x cubed over three. Oh, sweet. So if it's the fifth degree, and I should probably do approximately because I'm not going to write down all of them. So that's all I got to write down for that bad boy. Sweet. Um, and it says to use that polynomial uh, to, okay, so this would be a McLaurin. I could do an m5, fifth degree, right? of x, but this time it's going to be of 1. So I'm going to plug a 1 into all those bad boys. 1 over 3 plus 1 to the 5th over 5 factorial. I did this already for you guys, and I got an answer of, switch my page, 0.84167. I approximated a little bit, um, but let's all stow that in A. Is that all they asked? Okay, to find the maximum error for your approximation. Okay, but now I got to find the error. All right, so what's my error? Well, that's the fifth degree. So my remainder, right, would be the six, right? So I'm going to do the six. Okay, and I'm going to do this at one. All right, so we all know that's the actual minus the approximated. And Lagrange error bound, right, tells me that I could actually find what the max error would be. Okay. So what is that? That would be the sixth derivative at z. Now, what's at z? Well, this is McLaurin. So we're 0 and we're going to 1. So between 0 and 1, for the six local derivative, what is the highest possible value you get for that? All right, and that's just over 6 factorial times x minus c. Well, what is x? x is 1. What is c? It's the McLaurin, so it's centered at 0 to the sixth power. Okay, so I've got to find out what that is. So believe it or not, the most difficult part about this problem is what the heck is this? Well, that's the sixth derivative. Whew, let's do it. That means I've got to find the sixth derivative. Well, if I really want to be right, that's exactly what I need to do. I'm going to do it over here, okay? So that means f of x equals sine x. Let's see how fast we can roll this. The first derivative is cosine x. Class, what's the second derivative? The second derivative is negative sine of x. What is the third derivative? The third derivative is negative cosine x. What is the fourth derivative? Remember, we should really have parentheses around that, right? Which would be, oh, that'd be positive sine of x now. What's the fifth derivative of x? 
Well, if that's pop, that'd be cosine of x. What is the sixth derivative? I get back to negative sine of x. Okay, so that's the sixth derivative. And if I'm looking at that sixth derivative, I'm between 0 and 1. Whew, so between 0 and 1, what's my biggest answer for that derivative, right? And that's what I want to think about right now. And I don't know about you, but I really just need to check the endpoints to be accurate. So if I take the sixth derivative, and let's put in a 0, right, because I'm centered at 0. Sine of 0 is 0. Well, gosh, if that was the biggest one, that'd be sweet because it would zero out a lot of stuff. But the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the sixth derivative at ichi, right? And you really should check from zero to one. Now, the good thing for us on the AP exam, they are going to give us what the max is. Like that problem we did earlier, they, give a, they gave us what the max derivative would be. So this is a little bit ambiguous, and you could use a lot of different uh, um, values for this. Okay, but your best bet if you want to find the max value, and that's what we're trying to do here, find the highest, what's the biggest derivative? You use your endpoints. The sixth derivative at zero, sine of zero, zero, and then this would be negative sine of one. Now that's going to be negative, but we know we're going to do the absolute value of that, right? Because it goes in an absolute value when we do the Lagrange error bound. Now I did this earlier and I got 0 0.84, 0 0.8414. And we're going to store that in B. Okay, actually, I don't need to store that in B yet, but I'm going to use that value. Actually, let's store it in B. So that'd be B over 6 factorial, okay? And then it would be 1 to the 6. And that's going to be my error bound, my max error bound, my Lagrange error bound. And if you put all of that stuff into your calculator, it looks like I got an answer of 0 0.00111. 1168. I think that's right. I'm going to double check it right now. I feel like maybe I made a boo boo when I was doing this earlier, and my answer may not be right. Let's see. I'm going to go sine one. All right, sine of one. And I know I could be doing this on my calculator up there, but I'm not going to. And I just have to divide that by six factorial. All right, let's just see what I get here. Six factorial. Oh, no, this one doesn't have that little cheat mode on there. So 6 factorial, that'd be math. Go over to probability, number 4. Oh, sweet, I'm money. I'm money. All right, so I'm going to store that guy in C. And so when it says uh, to give me an interval, okay, I'm just going to come up here a little bit. It's going to tell tells me to give an, me an interval of what sine of 1 would be equal to. And sine of 1 is going to be contained in A, right? We put it up there. That was my Taylor polynomial. That was my approximation. And I'm going to subtract C, and I'm going to add C. Okay, and I got the answers right here for you. If you do all of that, check, your, check my work, please. Let me know if I got to take another video next year. That's the four decimal spots, 0.8428. Okay, so does that mean, could that be the answer? No way, Jose. Okay, and I need to get another page, so let's keep rolling. Boom, boom. All right, class, we got two examples left, and then you got example five to do on your own time. All right, let's check it out. Write the fourth degree Maclaurin polynomial for f of x e to the x. Then use your polynomial to approximate the square root of e. Okay, fourth degree Maclaurin. So that means we're going to have a Maclaurin fourth degree. I'll put a little faux right there. Okay, what would that be equal to? Well, that's equal to 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the third over 3 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial. Okay, there it is. Let's use that to approximate e to the 1 half. Well, that just means I got to put a 1 half in there, right? Because it's e to the x, e to the 1 half. So it's 1 plus 1 half plus one half squared over two factorial plus one half to the third over three factorial plus one half to the fourth over four factorial. And if I do that, I got an answer of 1.648375. And we will store that in A because we know we're going to need it pretty soon. All right, it says find a Lagrange, and that's definitely not an alternating series, right? So we definitely need the Lagrange, the Lagrange for this. And we're saying we want the Lagrange error, max error, uh, 
for uh, x being uh, between ooh, less than or equal to 0.5, and it's the absolute value. So we're really between 0 and 0.5. Okay, so how do we find this guy? Well, we want the remainder, right? The remainder of that guy, and the remainder of that dude is simply, and I guess I should put a 1 half in there, right? That is equal to the actual minus the approximated answer, which has to be, ooh, I guess I could write that, right? E to the 1 half, that's the actual, minus this uh, McCorn at 1 half, and that is going to be less than or equal to, if I want the max error, I'm going to go to the next guy. So I'm going to go to the fifth derivative, right, at z. Z, remember, is uh, between 0 and 0.5, right, in between 0 and 0.5 all over 5 factorial, x minus the x is 0.5, okay, uh, because that's what we're doing right here. And remember, this is McLaurin, so it's still centered at 0, so over 0, and we're going to raise that to the fifth power. So i got to find that answer. Toughest thing is that guy right there. Fifth derivative, oh, sweet, it's e to the x. What's the fifth derivative of e to the x? Well, the fifth derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Okay, so uh, shoot. So it's just really equal to our function value. But if you look very closely, we're just between 0 and 0.5. So what's this biggest value? What would happen at e 0.5? So believe it or not, to get my answer here, well, this max value, right, will be e 0.5. That's going to be my max derivative. And so I just do this. Now, some people are saying, well, what the heck? You know, uh, and you know what? Believe it or not, if this was on the AP, you could use a lot of different values. Remember, we just want the max, right? We just want the max. Um, and that's going to be the max. But you could even go e to the first. e to the first is 2.718, right? You could do that because it definitely covers here, right? That would be a max. And the question is, is what do you pick? You know, what do you use? Now, relax. On the AP, they're going to hook you up. You'll see in the next example we will do. But you could actually pick any value. But you don't want to get crazy. Right? It's like if I have a five, if, if I, it takes me 30 minutes to get to school. 30, sometimes 35. But you know what? So I, that, I guarantee I'm here for you homies in the morning. I leave 45 minutes early, right? That's like my error bound. Be 45 minutes early and there's some dude that doesn't know how to drive, I'm still going to get there in time. All right? That's what, really what we're trying to do here. We just need the max cover. Okay? You put all that bad boy in your calculator. Okay, whatever this guy gives you, you store that and you put it in B. Okay, I'm going to get through this one for you pretty quickly, which means the square root of E's got to be contained in A minus B and A plus B. Do they tell me to check anything? They don't. So your job is to finish that bad boy at home. This is the last video. I'm trying to get you out of here in under 30. So let's row. Give me them cows. Nice and easy. Japonese. All right, here we go. Example four. This is more tailored to what an AP question would look like, okay? And you'll see why. Write the third degree Taylor polynomial if we're centered at x equals 2. And use it to approximate f of 2.3. Okay, so we've got a Taylor third degree, so 3, right? Let's go ahead and write that guy out first. That'd be 6, right? These are my coefficients, plus 4. x minus 2 to the first over 1 factorial minus 7 x minus 2 squared over 2 factorial plus 8, x minus 2 to the third over 3 factorial. And it's asking me to approximate a f of 2.3. So it's going to be approximately equal to this guy, right, which is equal to, well, I guess I will kind of approximate this. I already did it for us. Actually, I think this is, um, this is an equal sign. Right, and we're going to store that in A. All right, so that's all the first part. That's all I needed to do. Three decimal places. I got you covered. All right, B. Here's the AP question. All right, the fourth derivative of f satisfies this following inequality. Okay, for all x that are in that interval. Oh my gosh, they just, the AP just hooked me up. I don't even have to think too much on this one, right? The toughest part, they helped me. Use the Lagrange air bound on the approximation of f of 2.3 found in part A to find an interval from A to B such that this is true. Okay, give three decimal spots. Okay, so what do I need to do here? Well, I need a remainder. 
right? I need my remainder. That's my air. That's my Lagrange air bound, right, class? That's what it is. And remember that that is equal to F of 2.3. I'm going to keep on writing this so we get familiar with it. Minus, and remember, we can flip-flop those guys because I've got absolute value. And Lagrange air bound tells me that that's going to be less than or equal to. Okay, we want to max this bad boy out, so we go to the next, right, the first unused term. Okay, that's third. Well, that's going to give me the fourth derivative here. Oh, sweet! Over 4 factorial x minus c. Well, x is 2.3. Minus C, I'm centered at 2, so that's a 2 raised to the 4th power. Now, this is usually the tough part, but guess what? If I'm between 2 and 2.3, I don't even have to try to figure out some max dude, right? The max from 2 to 2.3. If I'm looking at the both derivative, right? And I could use any x value from 2 to 2.3 and plug it into the 4th derivative. The max answer I'm going to get for that is a what is it? Ichi, ni, san, chi, go, loku, shi, chi, ha, chi, q, q. It's q. It's nine. So to get this answer, believe it or not, all I got here is a nine over four factorial, 0.3 to the fourth. And that's my Lagrange air bound. And I did this work for you guys. Um, if I plug that into my calculator, once again, please check these. And let me know if I got to make a video uh, for next year, 0 0.0003375. Let's store that in B. So here we go. What's f of 2.3? f of 2.3 will be contained in a minus b, a plus b. You guys do that work. Oh, I did it already for you. How about it? Okay, so I got 6.91. What did they ask me to do? I think three decimal places. 918, if I round correctly, and this would be 6.924. Okay, is that dude in there? No, it's not. So quit asking me these stuff that don't work. Okay, maybe they're expecting us to always say on the AP that it does work. And so it, this one didn't work. Oh my gosh, tear, tears, tear, 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 tears. I'm going to start making some more Aloha Fridays. You guys better watch them. Your homework tonight is truly, truly try your best here with example five. Okay, and see how you can do. Aloha, it's been a pleasure. It truly has. Aloha. Please study for that BC exam. All fives. Lo. Ichi ni sanchi. Go. Go, buns.